So if you went with the acid flow, you should have seen right at the very beginning, all up in your face, the following. Attacker controlled length, attacker controlled offset, but oh, what's that? That's right, acid math. And that's as bad as an acid bath. Yes, this constant size, size of NS list, which is 1024 32-bit values or 4096, 4096 minus an attacker controlled value if they set it greater than 4096, that is going to integer underflow to become an extremely large value. Then when the min is run, it will use the buffling instead, which itself can still be a very large value, just smaller than 4 billion. So that means that translang essentially is going to be acid coming from bufflang. Continuing on in the code, down here, right at the end of the function, we've got rec, which is an attacker controlled value. We've got translang, which is attacker controlled coming from bufflang. And then we've got offset. But what is this right here? This is a pointer to the beginning of that NS list. And that was a fixed size 4096 byte buffer. And now we've got an acid offset from that buffer. Well, that doesn't seem good, and that makes my sploity sense tingle, because that seems like that allows the attacker to index an arbitrary amount past the beginning of that list. So that value is going to be passed into here. So taking a look at our stack with low addresses low and high addresses high, we've got NS list with 1024 values, each 32 bits long. And so there's a calculation of a pointer that says take the base of NS list plus a fully attacker controlled offset. So clearly, if the attacker wanted, they could have that pointer point at, oh, I don't know, the return address, but they could also point it anywhere else they want. So that calculation right there means we're gonna have acid pointer being passed into this next function, NVMe C2H. That pointer field comes from this calculation there, which again is acid math, which is as bad as an acid bath. So attacker controlled lang, attacker controlled pointer, I should have also highlighted that. The rec is also attacker controlled, but doesn't matter because we're gonna follow a different path where that doesn't matter. So lang going into this next one, NVMe TX, pointer going into NVMe TX, and rec SG being passed in as well. Okay, so that's the same function right there, NVMe TX, lang, pointer, and the SG specifically inside of that acid rec. Now here's where the problems really start. You've got that attacker controlled SG pointing wherever, you've got an attacker controlled length, and you've got an attacker controlled pointer all being passed into a function called DMA buff read. Well, at this point, your sploity sense should really just be going wild because this code, which is the virtual hardware code for QMU, is reading from an attacker controlled pointer a arbitrary attacker controlled length and then it's storing it wherever the attacker says. So this is a big problem. So this is the situation we've got. The attacker has fed acid to the NVMe controller that is the virtual hardware running inside the QMU process on the host OS and the attacker successfully tricks that code into performing an arbitrary sized read from an acid pointer on behalf of the malicious guest OS. So acid pointer pointing somewhere else outside of the guest OS, outside of the virtualized environment, and now the attacker can just read an arbitrary big blob of stuff from outside and feed it into the guest OS. That could allow the attacker to, again, you know, what are info leaks good for? You can either steal some secrets or you can defeat things like address-based layout randomization and other things like stack canaries. You know, again, they could have pointed this pointer at the stack for the QMU process, and they could have read something like a stack canary and defeated the uh, stack overflow protection. So what was the fix for this? Well, pretty simple. Just make sure that that offset is not going past the size of the NS list. But then you should think to yourself, wait, hold on a second. What's the type for offset? Is it signed? And then you check and no, it's unsigned and it's 64-bit good. So that is a good sanity check. Let's keep those reads inbounds, not out of bounds, folks.